Hi guys, welcome to Mukbang Science Edition where we'll be trying out food from science as well as answering some of the questions that um, students normally ask and also sharing about our science journey. Without further ado, let's, okay, let's just introduce ourselves first. So I'm Jamin, a Year 4 Applied Mathematics student. I'm Jesse, a Year 4 Life Science student. Hi, I'm Muyang, a Year 4 Physics student. And I'm Sien Fang, a Year 4 Food Science and Technology student. Okay, so let's begin getting the cards. Let me start. So, the first question that we have is that I'm interested in other areas on top of my major, so what are my options? I was supposed to eat. I guess I can't eat now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so for me, um, I think like what, what other things we can do, uh, which is like other modules that we can take. So for me, like um, I do apply mathematics as a major, but I was actually quite interested in econs since JC. So uh, I actually took a minor in econs, and I think for econs itself, it actually broadened my scope of learning and really allowed me to understand how math can be applied to other things. I'm going to cut it now. Another common question is that whether it's expensive to go on a study abroad program. Okay, so I went on a study abroad program, or we call it SAP for short. Um, last year, I went to the US, um, to Georgia Tech. So it definitely depends on where you decide to go. So for me, because I went to the US, the cost of living is a bit higher, so everything was a bit more expensive. But it's definitely worth the price, because first of all, you're still paying um, NUS school fees, even though you are going to over these overseas universities, and they offer this kind of cultural and they also offer modules that are outside of your major, as well as more you know extensions to your major, which are very fun to take as well. So, even though it might be expensive for some, it's definitely worth the experience to just go there and live on your own and try to cook on your own as well. So, wait, wait, wait. what do you learn how to cook? Oh. Oh, you just go there. <laughs> you just go there and then you realize the food is too expensive and then you start cooking. So you have no choice but Yeah, you have no choice. Oh, okay. So for me, I didn't really like go for SMP. So instead of that, I replaced it with taking part in overseas competitions instead. So in this case, I actually went to like many different countries. So like Boston, India, and even like the latest one was actually Poland. Mm even like during this whole uh, COVID situation. So that was really exciting because we get our updates from like Singapore, but we are, we are safe, far yeah. away. Like, there's <laughs> no <laughs> cases at all, so. I think apart from all this also, I actually also went for overseas uh, experience whereby I went for OCIP. So basically what OCIP means is um, going there to do some community work. So I think that was quite a good experience for me overseas too. Okay, next question. Next question. I'm interested in research. What opportun opportunities are there for me? Okay, so uh, I'll start this off, I guess. So, because I want to go into PhD in the end. Oh, doctor. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, in a few years. <laughs> so, um, I've taken a, as much research opportunities as I can while I'm still in the undergraduate process. So, I've been in the special program in science, which is uh, gives you some research opportunities. I've done Europe, which is undergraduate research in year 3, and then now I'm doing FYP now. And it gives you a really wide range of things that you can do. So, for example, my um, my initial research was on quantum machine learning. Now I'm doing things on quantum computing. So there's really a lot of really exciting and um, recent things and hype things that you can actually work on. So it's very very interesting to like you know go there and actually have this kind of research experience. Wow, that sounds I really really agree with you on this because I myself also had the opportunity to research a really interesting topic under food science and technology. Mm -hmm. So. Currently, I'm trying to find ways to convert food processing byproducts, a form of food waste, back into healthy and nutritious food again. So it's really in line with the current industry trends. Okay, moving on to the next question. And the question is, what do you do outside of studying? Ooh, so science students are not just about studying, right? So what I do, right? is that I actually um, write on grains of rice. I have an online craft shop and I sell those little things to people. So I've been to like weddings, uh, product showcases and like, yeah, that's, that, that was pretty fun. And because I'm interested in entrepreneurship, right? So I took part in this uh, N um, NUS Overseas College, NOC for short, not the YouTuber one, which everybody thinks it is. Like our cinematic. <laughs> Yeah, not a plug for them, but <laughs> so essentially I took part in that. I actually interned in a local medtech startup and I learned all about entrepreneurship because I'm actually from a life science background, right? I had to learn everything from scratch and to learn to pitch to people and write financial reports, which is actually 
pretty tough for me but after that I really like the the whole startup environment a lot and therefore now I'm quite interested in the biotech industry to and actually have a startup there. So Okay, let's move on to the next wait, question. Wait, 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 I also want to share some stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. sorry. So apart from like all these things, right, I think apart from academics, there's also another big factor in school, which is CCAs. Ooh, yeah, so yeah. basically science actually offers quite a lot of CCAs. <gasps> like, um, like, you want to do sports, you want to do voluntary, you want to do some leadership positions, all these things are available out there. So like I mentioned to you all, I, I did an OCIP. So I also did a volunteering program where I kind of met her before, but yes. I don't actually remember that I met her. Oh, that's so sad. I'm so sorry, but <laughs> too bad. Yeah. Then basically, apart from that, um, I like because of all these things and all these um, opportunities to actually take up leadership positions. Uh, eventually, I started my own project in NUS, which is uh, a migrant project. So basically, it's called Project Wow. Like wow. Yeah. Oh. So basically, we actually <laughs> okay. raise awareness for like um, migrant workers as well as provide opportunities for students to actually um, get to interact with migrant workers and hopefully understand that we better. Now you can take your next question. Fine. <laughs> so the next question is, uh, could be something that is all in all your minds and our minds as well. Can I get a job after graduation? This is such an important question for all of us because you're all final year students. <laughs> <laughs> the answer, of course, yes. <laughs> But you can also prepare yourselves for job hunting after graduation by simply taking up internship opportunities while you're studying in science. So for instance, I managed to take up an internship at Milk Manufacturing Company under FST's Professional Placement Program. So it was a really enriching experience for me to apply what I've learned in classrooms to real-life situations faced by food companies. Mm. So for me, right, as I mentioned earlier, I interned in a medtech startup where I was actually a business development intern. And that's not really life science related in general, apart from the fact that it's actually a medical technology company. So, and beyond that, because of the special programs and sciences that Muyong took part, I also took part in, I actually got a research internship out of that. I interned in a laboratory in Duke NUS Medical School. And it's because like, uh, special programs and sciences actually have a huge uh, alumni network, like up to like 20 over years. So we actually use that to our advantage. Yeah, that's so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, our last question. So since like we all mentioned that we are old and graduating soon and year four. <laughs> okay, what are our greatest takeaways from science? Uh, greatest takeaways. Now uh, we need to ponder over and think. Right? Yeah, uh, I mean because uh, like like I mentioned, right? I I did a research internship. Mm. But my final destination, I believe, will be academia. Final destination. Okay, not final destination, but <laughs> the next, next stop. phase. <laughs> the next stop is actually PhD. So all these internships and research opportunities actually uh, gives me the right tools or the right knowledge to actually move on to the next stage. So I actually apply to like uh, schools uh, locally as well as the US. I'm waiting for the results. So. Hopefully things go well. <laughs> All the best to you. Are, you. are you ready to be called Dr. Jess? <laughs> eh, not the medical doctor though. <laughs> Do yeah. update us, okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for me, my greatest takeaway is actually the discovery of my passion for food throughout my four years at Food Science and oh. Technology. Food! <laughs> <laughs> what about? Oh, so for me, um, I, I started school thinking that I'll go into astrophysics and things like that. But my time in my four years in physics actually taught me that my passion actually lies in another field of quantum sciences. So that kind of realization has really helped me on choice, choosing my PhD careers and things like that. Okay, so for myself, my greatest takeaway I think is really like the friends I made as well as like the opportunities that I had um, in science whereby I get to um, develop myself as a leader and like get new skills that I think will be very very applicable when I get a job lah. You will. Oh, you will. But after this, will you still remember me? Uh, I don't know man. Up to you lah. Will oh, you still remember me or not? Of course lah. Okay I mean, lah, then you can remember me, I won't remember you. Okay, okay so I'm fine. sure. Okay. okay. Thank you for watching our Mukbang Science Edition episode. So just F my eye, actually this dish is actually from Uncle Penye, which is fucking good. <laughs> So thank you for watching our video. So remember to check out all the other videos by the professors and we hope to see you in science. So see you there! See ya!